Right, this video is going to discuss um, balancing equations and why we balance equations. The reason we balance equations has to do with the law of conservation of matter, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. What this means is that however much matter we have going into a chemical reaction, that is the same amount of matter we have to have coming out of the chemical reaction. We can't have more reactants than we do products because that would not abide by this rule. Um, this also means that whatever matter we have on Earth today is how much matter we will have in two days, a thousand years, two thousand years, etc. So it doesn't get dis destroyed or created, but it does change. It will change form. Sometimes it will stay in the form of a solid, sometimes it will become a gas, sometimes it will become a liquid but it does still exist. So that's the reason we have to balance equations in the first place, is to support this law. So let's go ahead and balance an equation, shall we? We'll start off with an easy equation. Um, step one of balancing equations is to actually write down the original chemical reaction. So in this case, I'm gonna start off with something simple. We're just gonna balance how water is formed. So I make a little table. I have my chemical equation at the top, and that is step one, writing it down. Um, very simple step, although be careful. You pay attention to where your pluses and minuses are, pay attention to your subscripts, all of that. Um, so step one, complete. Step two is to actually count how many atoms I have on both my reactant side and my product side. So in this case, I want to pay attention to individual atoms, not the compounds, but the atom. So I have two hydrogen because of the subscript two, and I have two oxygen on my reactant side. On my product side, even though it's in one individual compound, I still have my two atoms. I have two hydrogen, one oxygen. Um, and this is why we spent so much time on counting atoms inside of molecules so that we would, we would have that skill and understand the subscript so we'll be able to do our balancing. So I've got my count and when I look at it I can see I do have the same number of hydrogen on both sides but I do not have equal numbers of oxygen. Now I cannot change anything about my original equation when I'm doing this process. I cannot change H2 to H3 or O2 to O3. I can't change this to H2O and then just write plus O because that is not, that would be adding um, matter that was not originally there. What I can do, similar to what we did when we were bonding, is pretend I have an infinite supply of all of these things. So the next thing I would have you guys do is actually draw a little block around each of these individual compounds. These are what you have available to you to add to our chemical reaction, okay? So I can add more H2, I can add more O2, or I can add more H2O. I cannot add anything other than what I have a block around. And if we think of the blocks as individual pieces, I can't add just a piece of a block. If I wanna add more oxygen to this side, I have to add a whole nother block of H2O. Okay, so thinking of that, let's go ahead and let's say I wanted to go ahead and try and balance. Well, my hydrogens are balanced, my oxygen is not. I need one more oxygen on this side. The only way I can add oxygen would be to add another H2O. I can add H2O because it's one of my blocks. That changes my atom count. I now have two oxygen and two for hydrogen. So my oxygen is now balanced. But when I did that, I actually threw my hydrogen out of balance. So I need to add 
and H2. Again, I can add that to this side because it is on this side and it is one of my blocks. That would make that become four because I have two, four hydrogen atoms. Now I have four hydrogen on each side, two oxygen on each side, and I'm done, I'm balanced. My equation has been balanced. But now I have to rewrite the correct balanced equation. So to start off, I'm just gonna write what I originally had down. My H2 plus O2 yields H2O. This was my unbalanced equation. I'm now going to balance it by adding coefficients. Remember, coefficients change the number of molecules you have, not the substance you're working with. So I'm looking and I see I wrote H2 once, twice. I have my original H2 and I added another. So I'm gonna put a little coefficient two in front of my H2. I didn't change my O2, so I'm gonna leave it alone but I did add another H2O. So I'm gonna put a two there. This is my final balanced equation. Okay, let's do another one. So I can give you guys a couple of pointers. Okay, so let's say I have this equation. C3H8 plus O2 yields H2O plus CO2. So I have my equation written. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick all of my individual compounds in boxes right off the bat. And if you're ever stuck in whether or not they are together or one compound or two different compounds, look for your plus signs. If there's a plus sign, that means it's two separate things. If there's not a plus sign, that means it's one big compound. So I'm going to do my initial count. I have C's, H's, and O's. Three carbon, eight hydrogen, two oxygen on my reactant side. And again, I'm going to keep them in the same order so that I can easily tell when my numbers match. In this case, I have one carbon, two hydrogen, and two, three oxygen, okay? Now here's a pointer. Oxygen is in two places on this side. It's only in one place on this side, but I have two of them here. So I'm gonna leave my oxygen for last. I don't wanna have to guess which one to add. So I'm just gonna save oxygen as the last thing that I'm going to um, balance. So instead, why don't I start with my carbon? I have three carbon on this side, one carbon on this side. Carbon is only in one compound over here, so I know the only way I can get more carbon is to add more CO2. So if I add one more CO2, that changes to two carbons, and I just added another two oxygen, so this becomes five oxygen. I still need more carbon, so I'll add another CO2. That becomes three carbon and seven oxygen. My carbon is now balanced, so if I can avoid adding any more carbon to this side, that would be a good thing to try and do. So let's go to hydrogen. There's eight on the reactant side, two on the product side. So if I add an H2O, I've added two more hydrogen, so that's four, and one more oxygen. Still not quite there, so I'll add another H2O. That becomes six and nine, still not there, add another H2O. That becomes eight 
and that becomes 10. My hydrogen, 8 and 8. Perfectly balanced. So my carbon is done, my hydrogen is done. That's exciting. I still need to balance my oxygen. I have 10 on this side, 2 on this side. So if I add an O2, that becomes 4. Add another, 6, 8, 10. Now every individual atom type is balanced on both the reactant and the product side. Again, I'm going to write my equation just like my original. And then I go back up to the top. I only have C3H8 written once, so I'm going to leave that alone. I have one, two, three, four, five O2s. One, two, three, four H2Os. And one, two, three CO2s. Now I can always go back and check myself and check the math. So, and I would recommend you do this every time. You don't have to necessarily write it out, but double check your math. I have three carbon, eight hydrogen, 10 oxygen. I have three carbon, six oxygen, eight hydrogen, and another four oxygen, so 10 total. So I know this was correctly done. So again, reminder, the hint here, if you have an atom that is in two places, save it for last. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, in this case, I have two I'm going to have N2 plus H2 yields NH3. Always start with my counting. I have two N's, two H's, one N, three H's. So the, the little um, trick here is to think about whether, how you're going to add your different things, right? So. I have two N's here, so I need one more N. That's easy enough to do by adding another NH3, but I can only add H's by twos on this side and only by threes on this side, which means I'm gonna have to go for what my least common multiple is. Again, we did this before with bonding, two and three cannot go into each other, so the next number that they could go into would be six. So I'm just gonna right off the bat, try and get six H's. Okay, and it just so happens so that works perfectly. I now have two N's and six H's. So my final equation would be one, two, three, one, two, N2 plus three H2 yields two NH3. So when you have situations where you have to add um, one particular element, in numbers that don't fit together, always think about their least common multiple, what they would work. If this hadn't worked with six, I would have jumped to 12 because that would have been the next number that both three and six could go in, or three and two could go into. Three could make nine, but two can never make a nine, so I would have to go to the next one, which is 12. Okay, last little pointer here. 
Okay, this one looks really big and scary, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with it. And I'm gonna give you a quick pointer on how we could go about doing this. Okay. So, first off, let's say I go ahead and I come in and I draw my boxes. Okay. So I have four different boxes, four different things that could potentially be added. These two can go to this side, these two can go to this side. Now, the way we've been doing it thus far is we have taken each individual element and written it out. So I would have done aluminum, bromine, potassium, sulfur, and oxygen, and done their counts. I could still do that. And if that's where you're comfortable, keep doing that. A trick though, notice this is a polyatomic, SO4. It's one of those polyatomic um, ions we talked about. If you have a polyatomic, just like with bonding, you can treat it like it's one individual thing. So my polyatomic SO4 is nice over here, and notice it's SO4 over here as well, and it's in those parentheses. So rather than counting the sulfur the, and the oxygen separate, I can look at and say, how many SO4 polyatomics do I have when I do my count? So in this case, if I do my counting, I have one aluminum, three bromine, two potassium, and one SO4. Over here, I have two aluminum, three SO4, one potassium, one bromine. Now when I do my, my count, when I do my balancing, I can look and say, okay, my aluminum is imbalanced, my bromine is imbalanced, my potassium is imbalanced, and my SO4 also is not balanced. So I can pick one. Let's start with aluminum. I have two on this side, one on this side. So I need to add another AlBr3. Al becomes two, Br becomes six. Okay. Now I can look and say, okay, I have two potassium over here, only one over here. So I need another KBr, that gives me two and two. Well, my bromines are not balanced, right? I'm gonna need more bromine eventually, so might as well get it taken care of. KBr, that becomes three, that becomes three. KBr, that becomes four. That becomes four. That becomes five and five. And six and six. So now my aluminums are balanced, my bromines are balanced, my K's are imbalanced. So if I add another K2SO4, that will become four. I now have two SO4s, okay? Because I added a, I'm treating it like a whole thing, one big thing. I right, add uh, another K2SO4. That brings this K to six and my SO4 to three. Now everything is balanced. I have three SO4s over here. I have one, two, three SO4s over here. I have two, four, six Ks here. One, two, three, four, five, six Ks here. I have three, six BRs. One, two, three, four, five, six BR one, two AL, and two AL. So it, it has become balanced. So when I write my final equation, I 
and then I do my counting. One, two, so I add the coefficient two. One, two, three, I add my coefficient three. One, leave it alone. One, two, three, four, five, six, add the coefficient six. This is my final equation. The one thing I will say is if you do put your polyatomics together and keep them as one big compound, you have to make sure that they are exactly the same on both sides. This, for example, would not work. I could not do SO4 here because this is SO4 and that is SO3. So I cannot use that trick.